Hey guys, how are you doing? My name is Ankuncha, my name is Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today I'll be reacting to Attack on Titan Season 2 Episode 9 and 10. I'm so excited. I don't think I'm ready for these episodes. I mean, things are not looking good right now. Eren got taken away, Ymir got taken away by Reiner and Berthold. And now everyone is going on a rescue mission to save those two. Reiner and Berthold are now hiding in the forest. And they are waiting until it gets dark so they can move again without being bothered by Titans. So we'll see how it's gonna go. There's this whole mission with a time limit this time. So I'm getting nervous. But at the same time, I'm also very excited to see how it's gonna go. So yeah, without further ado, let's jump right into the episode. So let's go. Alright, I'm ready, so I'm gonna start the episode in 3, 2, 1, go. Alright. Everyone's on their way. Alright, so Han just stayed behind. Of course, like she's burned and everything. Where, um. Yeah, interesting that she's thinking about that Titan at this moment. Yeah. She's talking about the village where Connie came from, right? With the titan on top of Connie's house. And he had a hunch that it was his mother or something. Right? <laughs> Alright. Hannes also tagged along. Hannes had a great moment in the previous episode, the way he was, you know, acting like this uncle figure, really trying to motivate um, Mikasa and Armin by talking about the past as well. Just reassuring that everything was gonna be alright, you know, everyone was still the same as before. So I really liked that, that was a great great moment Opening. All right, here we go. Okay, back to Aaron and the others. So weird as he stumps. Yeah, you had to make sure that they couldn't escape, right? Oh. Oh, so it wasn't even on purpose. I 
can just feel the tension. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the, the titans are just waiting for them to come down. The one who's just laying. Oh my god, <laughs> that is so creepy. <sighs> that abnormal one is the, the creepiest. Oh my god. <laughs> That one too. Oh damn. I never get used to them. Like I'm almost at the end of season 2 and I'm still not getting used to seeing Titans. They, they still creep me out. Good thing Aaron had Emir with him. In this situation you know she's the one who can still think calmly in this kind of you know situation yeah I think he's right about it. No, Lady. Aiden, you may also must have a hundred things. Oh, are they finally going to explain everything? Finally! Yep. the thing Reiner said is impossible hmm possibly yes Still keeping secrets. Yeah, there's so much to think about. Good, <laughs> good. You need information. <laughs> Just figure out about their plans or backstory. Just anything. Good. Okay, 
back to the others. <gasps> oh, there's already a Titan coming. <laughs> That's true. What's he talking about? Promotion? What kind of promotion? <laughs> <gasps> yeah, he just suddenly thought talking about the tower thing. Yeah, there's something wrong. Yeah. Bertel knows something, but there's just something wrong with Reiner's head. We're warriors. Oh, this is from back then? Yeah. Now I'm even more confused. Oh my god. So they actually witnessed Marco getting eaten. Because we never discovered what happened to Marco. Like, we saw that he died, but we... We didn't see how it happened. Yeah. Kind of like 
getting a double personality. Wow, that's insane. Yeah, he's used to this. Yeah, he's staying quiet the whole time. <laughs> you damn lucky. Right. They felt sorry. That's probably not the words Aaron wanted to hear. Neither soldiers or warriors. <gasps> できるだけ苦しんでいる。努力するよ。でも。いや。<笑><笑> Oh. Yeah. The beast titan. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it seemed like. He, he was trying to get information. <laughs> oh my God. This is so complicated. Oh yeah, that's that's thinking naive. 
there must be a lot more than just the two of them, you know? Oh my god, they're giving Ymir this choice. They're coming. All right, now it's decision time. What are they going to do? Oh. One hour. Whew. Wow. This episode went by so fast. But just because it was like so information packed, you know, it was there was so much information, so much like new things to consider. Even I had a hard time keeping up. Just imagine. And you know what the funny thing was about this episode? Yeah, this whole contrast between Eren, who really wants to act recklessly, who, um, who is not really capable of thinking things calmly through. And then we have Imi on the other hand, who just analyzes everything very logically, you know? And um, also realistically. It was just the whole time Eren who was like freaking out while Ymir was calming him down, you know? Like, Eren, calm down! <laughs> Think this through first before you act. And then we also had Ymir asking the important questions that really matter compared to Eren who just asked who is the enemy you know that's like such a stupid question in this case honestly anyways there was episode 9 of Attack on Titan season 2 and yeah like I said there was just there was just a lot of talking a lot of information not a lot of action yet that is gonna come next episode I'm sure in this episode there were just I don't know, they were just throwing in a lot of things that made me have to reconsider or rethink a lot of different things. You know, they keep on giving hints about Reiner and Bertolt's mission, but then they also don't. Then they also talk about Ymir's circumstances, but then they also don't. And then they keep like teasing us the entire time, you know, they try to tell us something, but then they don't. Ugh. So frustrating. I mean, like, what is starting to become clear is that they're 
at least three different groups, right? We have the survey corps, you know, the people who fight the Titans. Then we have the people with a certain mission, including Reiner, Berthold, and Annie. They're all from the same group. They have a specific mission. They are sent on a mission as warriors. So Berthold and Reiner were in charge of breaking the wall. And then after that, I don't really know what their mission was. Just infiltrate the Survey Corps, act as spies, I suppose. But then we also have this third group with Emir. She has a totally different position. It doesn't seem like she has a specific mission, but it seems like there are still some rules that she has to follow, you know, when it comes to using her Titan powers or, you know, talking about her circumstances. There are certain things she's keeping secret as well. So that's why it all makes it very complicated. Like everyone is still very secretive. No one is really willing to tell much more about their mission or circumstances. So we're still like left with nothing basically. What else became clear is also that there are like at least two different groups or types of titans. The ones that cannot be out there during the night time and the ones that can. So the titans we are used to or the ones we see normally, they're not able to move around at night time. But we saw during that whole crisis at the ruins or the tower thing, they were also titans who could move around during night time. So there are also different groups of titans, which, which also became clear. Another thing that made me very curious was also the little flashback in which they were showing how Marco got eaten. Like we never really got to see that in season one, you know, like we saw how he was dead after it happened, but we don't know how it happened. And this for the first time, they actually showed it and they showed how Reiner, Berthold and Annie witnessed it, but they were still teasing it. So I hope we got to see more of that. It's definitely... It's something I completely forgot about or didn't even think that that was still relevant, you know, the thing with Marco. In season one, I just assumed that there was just something to showcase that anyone can die at any moment, you know, and you might not even witness it. At that moment, I was just so surprised that anyone can just die so suddenly and that's how I saw Marco's death. But now that they're showing their flashback, I'm like, okay, maybe there's more to it, you know? Maybe they'll tell us more about that in the future as well. But yeah, like I just said a little bit, I, you can really notice the differences in like the mindset between Eren and Ymir. Eren is really still like focused a lot on the past while Ymir is thinking about the future. You can also sense that in the way they're asking the questions. Eren is more like, right, you guys, you broke the walls. And because of that, my mother had to die. So when you listen to that story, how did you feel? You know, it's really like a thing from the past. And that's also why I really understood Reiner when he reacted as, you know, like, what do you, what do you want? You know, like there, it's from the past. We cannot change anything anymore. So what do you want from us? Do you want us to apologize? And that's how Aaron came to the conclusion that he just wants them to die and just have a very brutal death either. And, and Ymir was like, don't be so childish. <laughs> oh my God, the way she said that. It's so typical of Ymir though. But like, like in comparison to the question Aaron was asking, Ymir was really thinking more about the future. So she, for example, asked about the beast titan, you know, just things, just asking questions that still matter because getting to know more about the beast titan will definitely help them in the future. So those are the kind of questions you want to get from your opponents, right? So that's something I really noticed, just a very different ways of thinking between Ymir and Eren. And also at the end when Eren asked like, who's the enemy? It just... At that moment, you know, like how they were talking about how Ymir is different from Reiner and the others, how she also has her own secrets and circumstances, how the world is gonna end. And then like, why do you ask who the enemy is? That, that just, for me, it just sounded like a very stupid question at that moment because 
they were just talking about how complicated the whole situation is. There's no one enemy. You know, that's also why Ymir answered as who knows, you know? <laughs> it just I just found that question so stupid at that moment. I was like, Aaron, just listen to them. There's just this situation is so complicated. There's probably no like one right answer to that question anyway. So we'll see how it's gonna go. The others are almost there. There's just one hour left. So we'll see how it's gonna go. I'm definitely very excited. I'm expecting more action and fighting in the next episode. So without further ado, let's stop right into it. So let's go. All right, I'm ready. So I'm gonna start the episode in three, two, one. Back to Connie's village. Yeah, that all doesn't make sense. There's just one logical explanation. The one uh, on top of Connie's house. Oh, those are Connie's pre uh, parents. Uh. Yeah. That is the mother, isn't she? Isn't it crazy though? Like she's like a splitting image of the photo, you know? <laughs> Didn't Connie recognize her when he saw her? Like he had an idea or a suspicion that it was his mother, but he wasn't sure, you know? Like now when you look at her, like or when you look at that Titan and you look at Connie's mother on the picture, they're so alike. I don't know, like why? <laughs> uh, you would think that her son, Connie, would be able to recognize her, right? Or like maybe, okay, let's just say that he was too shocked in that moment. He was just so surprised to see a Titan on top of his house. And they also had to hurry and stuff, so let's just say that that was the case, you know? Children. Okay. Mm, yeah, now they have to make decisions because time's almost up. Yep, they're coming. ライナー、君は今何だ安心し天使だ。そうしてユーミルを信用するというのか。あいつはマルセルを切ったやつじゃないか。あ、だからこそユーミルの立場は明白だ。Who's Marcel? This 
more to Krista as well. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go to the next one. 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 I'm going He had feelings for her. <laughs> oh, they're leaving now. <laughs> what is he thinking? Yeah, I was like... <laughs> oh, damn. Oh my god, now I remember the one little flashback we saw. Right, because Reiner and Bertel both recognized Ymir in a titan form. Oh, and Marcel might be the one that, like that comrade that got eaten by the titan back then. I'm not really sure. Sixty years? Huh? How old are they? <laughs> they keep throwing in a lot of information. I'm sorry if I'm missing some things, guys. Just, just giving a warning because it is a lot. Uh -oh. Still charging straight ahead. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> they're coming. Oh, she didn't even notice? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, Krista's there as well. She knows her. Fujiro, Mr. Hontoni, or any more. 
my boobs. Oh. Flashback. Oh, that's young Emir. Yeah, she was like being worshipped. Yeah, compared to how she lived before. That's how she turned into a titan? Wow. She mentioned that, that she stayed out there for like 60 years. back then and that must be that Marcel wow so that was just a coincidence that they came across each other Thank 
That is a beautiful shot. That's when she discovered about Krista. What is she gonna do? Oh, damn. Oh, she's really gambling on it. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, things are finally gonna start. Who's that? Is that Emir? I think I think that's Emir. That sounded like Emir. Yep, there she is. Is she still saying?
She's just looking for Krista. <laughs> Connie! No. See? No, I think she's not really eating her. She's just trying to get Krista and get away from there. Oh, so they were really cooperating. Oh no! <laughs> Here it comes. still have time the sun is not down yet even though it doesn't really matter anymore I mean they already continued <sighs> oh my god this show is so frustrating but at the same time so so good It's just so unpredictable, like you have no idea how everyone is gonna act. The entire time I had no idea what Ymir was gonna do. That's I also kinda like understand how Aaron was thinking, you know. He just tried to analyze the situation, try to come up with the best solution the best option to get away but that's just impossible when you're with people who are all unpredictable you have no idea how they're gonna act So yeah, that was episode 10 of Attack on Titan season 2. Oh my gosh. There was still like less action than I thought or expected that would happen in this episode. You're still very much focusing on dialogue, I guess, on backstories. They were really focusing on Ymir's backstory this time. This time we got her full backstory and um, that's at least one, you know, and it's great that in this way they're connecting a lot of different dots we had a lot of different questions so in case of Ymir I'm not really sure like I didn't fully understand the whole situation it just seemed like she came from a village she was an orphan just living on the streets and she got adopted sort of like just you know she just got picked up from the streets and had to pretend like the blood of the king was flowing through her so she had a lot of followers through that and i guess that was a bad thing i don't know how the situation back then was like basically she was just you know scamming everyone like there was no blood of the king flowing through her even though she still had a lot of followers and also at the end like she could have been just honest and say that she was just made to do it that it wasn't her own will that she never said it herself but instead she saw like everyone's 
faces and she didn't want to abandon them I suppose you know they still had a bit of hope in her so that's why she still told the lie in the end but that's also what made her an accomplice and that's I guess how everyone got executed sort of like we saw that scene in which everyone was like pushed down from the wall but you could hear some kind of like injection or something you know you could hear something before people got pushed down of the wall also in Emir's case we heard something before she got pushed down and then after that we saw her in the tidal form so maybe maybe I have a feeling that you just turn into Titan through some kind of injection I got that feeling ever since I saw that flashback I think it was in season one when Aaron got injected with something by his father I believe you know ever since I saw that I was like okay that's probably how they turn people into Titans <laughs> and this once again made me think the same thing but what surprised me was that Ymir has already lived like for longer than 60 years or so even though she was in her Titan form the whole time she just stayed underground for um, I don't know how many years and then one time she just decided to come above ground and that's when she coincidentally came across Reiner, Berthold and the Marcel guy that she eventually ate and after that she turned into a human so that might be a trigger you know like maybe you have to eat humans to turn back into one maybe you know these are just all theories that I come up with after I get all these little hints and snippets you know like the truth might be something different but I find it fun to speculate about these kind of things anyways I really love that shot you know when she was just staring at the sky night sky with the northern lights and you know it was just so beautiful so yeah i just like the backstory like i said it connected a lot of different dots also the way she discovered krista we've seen that before but this time they showed us a bit more so also the little scene in which we saw krista sneakily putting bread inside her bag that she afterwards gave to sasha I was like, okay, nice little detail that we didn't see before, but that they're showing right now. It's I always enjoyed when they throw back older scenes and added something new to it, which they did a couple of times in this episode in particular. So that's why I really enjoyed this episode. But yeah, I find it interesting that they put like so much emphasis and focus on Krista right now. It just makes you question who are like the main characters, you know? Right now they're really focusing on Emir, Reiner. Krista, you almost, it almost makes you think like they're the main characters of the show, even though they aren't, they're still like the side characters, technically. But just the amount of attention they're getting right now, I, I just found it very interesting. Like I mentioned, there's also more to Krista's backstory, I suppose, and her whole position also within the church. She also has a quite an important position, and it's also why Reiner wants to rescue her, not just because he thinks she's cute, but also for more convenient reasons for their whole mission, I suppose. And Emir obviously wants to rescue Krista for her own personal reasons. So that's why they're working together right now, all for Krista. So I guess it kind of makes sense that they're working together. And now they're all getting away with it. The others are still trying to catch up to them. So yeah, we'll see how it's gonna go. Oh. It is just all so nerve-wracking. I just can feel the tension the entire time. And I have to stay focused the entire time. Because like I especially experienced in these two episodes. They throw in a lot of like new information and things. That makes me rethink all the things that we've known so far. So it asks a lot of my brain power. But I'm trying. I think I'm doing okay. Like I'm not missing too much. So yeah, there are only two episodes left. I'm expecting like a big climax once again. So I'm not sure if I'm ready for the next episodes. But yeah, that was my reaction to these two episodes. I hope you enjoyed it. So if you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you could see my other reaction videos, please check out my channel and subscribe. And if you cannot wait to see my reaction to the next two episodes, you can already find it on my Patreon. So if you're interested, please go check it out. You can find the link in the description box below. So in any case, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.